Hi everybody, Daphne here. So I've been requested uh, several times to do more uh, long form uh, art videos, art demo videos with more commentary. So uh, in this video, what I'm going to be showing is a book cover that uh, I was commissioned to do. And this video is going to show all the pretty much the entire process that uh, that I did to create this book cover. So right now, uh, what you're seeing is uh, me in the process of inking the main figure of the piece. The people who commissioned the uh, cover, they had wanted a very specific pose. Uh, based on a photo from the 80s because the the story that uh, that they wrote is very 80s well some of this very it's based in the 80s and they wanted the artwork on the cover to reflect that so uh, they gave me a very specific pose to use and I based their character on that image and uh, once I had the image itself approved just to make sure that the character looked the way they wanted it, or they wanted the character to look, and uh, and it had all their other criteria for the uh, for the character. Then I went ahead and I transferred the sketch onto some Bristol paper and started inking it with my rapidiographs. Now the reason why I use my rapidiographs instead of my uh, standard uh, sketching pens, the the Statler. Uh, multi-liners is so that I'm using actual ink to create the image which is um, a much darker line a much more solid line and uh, and it just has an overall nicer more professional look to it after it's done inking I'm not saying that the other pens are not professional looking but it just gives a different effect and for this particular piece I really wanted the image to look as clean as possible you know the inks as solid as possible so that's why I went ahead with using my rapidiographs and inking the way I did as opposed to if I was doing a convention sketch and it could, you know, it, it could uh, afford to be looser. I can afford to be looser with the lines. So here I am finishing off the, uh, the piece. And after waiting for the ink to dry, because especially with the rapidographs and the Kohenors, you really have to wait for the ink to dry or else you're going to smudge all over the place. So after erasing the pencils, the next thing that I'm going to do is putting it, scanning it and putting it into the computer because I'm going to color this piece digitally. I originally thought that coloring it maybe with more traditional methods might have looked better, but in order to really get the 80s feel that I wanted, uh, digital color was definitely the way I wanted to go to get that effect as best as possible. So right now what you're seeing is me creating in Illustrator uh, the background to the image that the character is going to be laid on top of when she's completed. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a 80s inspired looking geometric background um, based on just the overall vibe of a lot of pictures from the 80s uh, that I was able to find online as, as inspiration. Um, I'm, <laughs> if, you, if you were, you know, if you went to school during the 80s, you probably would recognize this type of pattern as probably being on your binders and on your folders. You know, the whole trapper keeper. You know, if, if you didn't have Lisa Frank, you probably had, you know, a generic 80s style geometric 
uh, pattern, which is what I'm uh, working on here. Uh, the Photoshop is a program that I use mostly, but when you want to get like really, really clean vector lines, Illustrator is, is the best program to use. So right now what I'm doing is um, I'm just going to just check the overall look and make sure I have the the right look for the, the image. I mean, if you do like a, a Google search, you know, you could just pretty much have an instant inspiration board on your screen. And there was one particular image that I thought kind of fit what I was trying to do. Uh, so I used that trying to match the colors, you know, really trying to get that bright 80s color feel. Um, you know, but still, but still making the design my own. I, I don't want to, I didn't want to copy, uh, images from Google. I, you know, directly. I mean, that's, they're not my images to copy. So what I, what I was trying to get is the feel of these eighties patterns rather than copying an eighties pattern, uh, completely. Uh, so here I am just, you know, trying to get the colors correct, you know, seeing what, you know, those neon colors that were really popular back then for design work and uh, just putting together the background in a way that the character will still be able to stand out without getting lost in the background. Because if anything, uh, what I learned from putting together these these '80s type images is that you can. It's very easy to go too far, so um, I didn't. So I really had to be careful with how I did the background. So right now, what I'm doing is I'm filling out the. Uh, I'm, filling out the character to prepare her for coloring. So right now, uh, what I'm doing is putting in the shading. And what I do when I'm coloring a piece is that I do the entire piece in usually shades of blue. Um, what I find that by doing the shading this way, I'm not getting confused by colors as to, oh, you know, like how the shading is going to look. Um, I remember another artist talking about the best way to get uh, a color piece looking correct is to make sure that your undertones are correct. And in, and in her case, she was talking about doing a piece in gray tones and making sure that your shading's correct before you add color on top of it. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm putting in the shading using in different shades of blue. And this way I can see whether the shading is looking correct or not. Um, it, so, so yeah, so that's, and that's just pretty much what it is. I mean, it's like, um, I'm more, I've always been a fan of cell style shading, so I'm obviously not going for an ultra realistic look when it comes to the shading and, and the coloring, but I still want, I still want the piece to look correct. Um, even if the shading can be a little bit I don't know if fantastical is a word, but you know, not, not completely accurate, but just giving me the look that I'm going for. And like I said, in this piece, I'm going for a cell shaded look. So in this particular piece, um, most I'm using three layers of shading. Well, two layers of shading and the base color. Um, on simpler pieces, 
I'm usually using just the base color and one layer of shading. But when I want a piece to look a little bit more detailed, a little bit more polished, I put in that second layer of, uh, of shading to give it a little bit more depth than I would get if I just left the base layer and the main shade layer. So as you can see, um, another thing that you have to be careful of when you're dealing with multiple layers of shading is to not let each layer overwhelm the other. Uh, the whole point of shading is to complement um, each other and to complement the piece as opposed to overwhelming the piece with either like you're just covering up the same lines over and over again or it's just way too much going on. So you, you really have to be careful with that when uh, you're doing your shading. It's like, um, yeah, so it, it helps to study how shading works on actual objects. Um, to tell you the truth, in, in this particular case, uh, to tell you the truth, I learned a lot of my shading techniques from those... Um, not manga, but the anime art books, because since cell shading was what I was really, really trying to capture, I was studying a lot of cell shading in anime and anime promotional art in order to get the look that I wanted. So that's what I'm going uh, for here. So here I am just finishing up the second layer of, of shading. And as you can see, because you're just dealing with just three shades of the same color, you pretty much can tell right off the bat if the shading is looking correct or not. And it's easier to fix than um, if you were just using the color, uh, you were using colors straight. So here I'm finally putting in the base color uh, using a character sheet that they so that the client supplied. So, uh, so at least from the character sheet, I can just copy the colors uh, that they used so that I can get an accurate representation of the character in my version. So here I am just coloring in, just putting in the base, the base tones. Um, as you can see for the markings, I didn't put any line work, uh, any black line work to, uh, to differentiate because what I wanted was just the color to outline uh, the white markings and the brown markings on her arms because uh, I thought that it gave it um, a nicer, cleaner look. So that's pretty much all I'm doing right now is just setting up the base colors for the piece after, after all the shading is done on separate layers. So yeah, so uh, this is the first time that I've actually uh, have recorded my digital work on you know, this way so I can you know film it and it's just really uh, funny to watch. Um, I wish that I could do a piece as quickly as it looks like I'm doing in the uh, in the video but of course it's it's all sped up because um, I probably I'm sure some of you would have liked to have seen a real-time version of this video but I, I kind of don't think you'd like the idea of sitting through a three hour video just watching me do a piece in real time. <clears throat> so the, the thing that I was doing here is that I wanted to give the stockings the appearance of being see-through uh, and still getting, um, and still not losing the markings on her legs. So as you can see, by using the layers, I was able to create the shading 
uh, just by adjusting the contrast uh, of the layers and probably just filling filling colors up differently uh, if I didn't like the way the tones came out. Here I'm doing on a separate layer all the highlights to, to give it a more finished feel. Um, one thing <clears throat> one thing's for sure though, this is one of the rare images where I did the contrast, the, the contrast adjustments to get the shading and the colors actually came out exactly the way I wanted them to. Um, a lot of the times what happens is that the shading is just good enough and then I have to go in with, a, with the fill bucket to change the colors to what I really wanted. But because it's a shape I'm dealing with on the layer, it just fills in exactly the areas that I need. So it's not like I have, I'm recoloring anything again. So here's the finished colored piece. And uh, right now what I'm doing is I'm flattening the layers so I can bring the, uh, the character into my next image, uh, which is going to be the background. Uh, but right now I'm just setting it up with shading or whatnot so that the client has the option to use the character separately from the cover if they wanted. So as you can see, I already have the background set up. And now I'm just putting in the character on top of the background and the logo that I created in Illustrator to create the finished cover uh, that the client is going to use. Um, unfortunately, I had forgotten to film the me do creating the logo, uh, but it's pretty much the same thing. It was done in Illustrator using Vector. Um, it origi I originally had wanted to do like some crazy airbrushed logo when I realized that it was just way too much going on in the, uh, in the cover. So I scaled back a bit, kept it with the flat vector covers and all well, the colors. And as you can see, the, the character, I'm just separating out the, co the character from the background so that she doesn't get lost in the shapes. And here is the final piece for the cover. So, um, which the client did, you know, did enjoy. I made sure to make, I did make sure to send them a lot of um, updates so that nothing was a surprise to them, especially when I had to make the decision to change the logo from an airbrushed three-dimensional effect to the flat vector uh, logo that ended up with on the cover. So that's the finished piece. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, this video. Uh, I hope this is kind of more in the style of what uh, some people were asking, more videos with more art demos with more specific art commentary. So I hope that's what you like. If you do, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any questions about how I did certain in the piece or, or any questions about any materials or any programs that I use just uh, put your questions down below and um, I'll try to get to uh, answering it in a timely manner and as always like and subscribe uh, subscribe to my channel for more art demos and um, I'll see you on the next video bye Uh, for the F Disney figural keychains. I'll also put a link below. It didn't come with the purse, but it's perfect for it. So yeah, so you want when you want to use the purse, you just